why, why spend so much time worrying about the beginning of the universe and not just worry about the contingency of our existence moment to moment? Uh, I think that you also like that argument, this is a supplement. Yes. I, I think that the argument from contingency is also a sound argument for uh, a, a sufficient reason of the existence of anything rather than nothing. And I think that Leibniz's version of that argument is a sound argument. But I think this is also a sound argument. Uh, the the, the so-called cosmological argument has taken a number of forms in the history of philosophy. One, as you point out, is simply based on the contingency of the universe, whether it had a beginning or not. The other is a tradition that comes out of uh, pre-Islamic Christian thought and then Islamic medieval theology, Jewish theology, and then finally back into Christian theology again. And it's that tradition that uh, I am representing uh, here in this argument because it has received such dramatic and unexpected verification from contemporary astrophysics. As you probably know, for a medieval thinker like Thomas Aquinas, he always argued on the basis of the eternality of the universe because he had no way of proving that the universe began to exist. But Aquinas recognized that if the universe did begin to exist, then he said it's obvious that there has to be a cause because something can't come into being out of nothing. And it seems like contemporary astrophysics has come to support that very missing premise that Aquinas uh, thought would make the existence of a transcendent creator obvious. So this isn't meant to compete with the argument that you mentioned. On the contrary, I think it supplements it and complements it. Yes? Can you briefly explain the Caleb argument? That's what this is. This, this is a version of the kal what I call the Kalam cosmological argument. Kalam is the Arabic word for uh, speech, and it connotes that whole movement within medieval Islamic theology that could best be described as uh, Islamic scholasticism. And medieval Islamic thinkers developed this argument with a great deal of sophistication, though their arguments were philosophical and metaphysical rather than empirical. But uh, when I began to study this argument in my doctoral work, I, w I, I began to become captivated with contemporary cosmology and was stunned to discover the degree to which there's good empirical evidence for this key premise for, as well as philosophical argument for it, which I haven't even shared tonight. But the, the structure of the argument would be the same. I haven't gone into philosophical arguments for premise for. Yes, Arnie. Well, in your writings, you uh, distinguish between physical and empirical time mm -hmm. and metaphysical time. You had time to use the majority of words sloughed over and ignored the issue of metaphysical time. Yeah. So your uh, premise three, your proposition three, uh, has a dwelling in it and embodied in it all of your philosophical arguments <laughs> that it is metaphysically impossible for there to be an infinite temporal series anyway. Right. Uh, Arnie... Because, because you, could, you could have a infinitely many uh, gods who succeed each other in time one after another who are spiritual beings if you do not uh, admit the, uh, the validity yeah. of your philosophical arguments that there cannot be an infinite temporal series, right? One, one, uh, let, me, let me back up and explain to folks what, he's, what Arnie is saying because he's familiar with some of my written work and quite rightly points out that I don't think that what contemporary physics studies is really time itself. That in fact I think it discusses measures of time. That the time that physics studies is really an empirical measure of time, but the time itself is a metaphysical reality that transcends our measures of it. And Arnie very perceptively points out that in inferring that the uh, creator is timeless sans the universe, uh, I'm really presupposing more than just physical time began at the Big Bang. I'm presupposing that metaphysical time began at the Big Bang. And you're quite right to say there sticks beneath the surface here an iceberg of further argument that one could share. However, I don't think, Arnie, that one needs to be worried about your question about uh, uh, an infinite series of gods because I do think Occam's razor shaves that away. Occam's razor says don't multiply causes beyond necessity. 
And I think one is only justified in inferring uh, a single cause for the origin of the universe. And to infer that there are more would be quite unjustified. Now, you're right, there could be more, but you wouldn't have any grounds for that inference. But you could have a ground, or you'd have to discuss further as to whether this God was atemporal, that is, yeah, yeah, that's right. was, uh, rather than omnitemporal, Absolutely. Uh, everlasting. You're quite right. And, and, the, and the other point is, isn't all this question about whether the universe began to exist presuppose that uh, a lot of the more, more high-level theory of astrophysics is to be realistically interpreted rather than instrumentally? Aren't, aren't you presupposing a lot when you're admitting that we're talking about measured time and uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, in fact, as I said, I think that uh, Haw any attempt to interpret Hawking's imaginary time model realistically is going to be unsuccessful. That That is a model that one would interpret instrumentally. So I do think that it requires us to say that, yes, the universe really is expanding, that this isn't just a, a figment of our theories. So yes, the, I, I am a scientific realist about things, but a, a critical realist. I'm not just buying things hook, line, and sinker. Yes, Victor. Actually, you could use Occam's razor to, uh, to shave away uh, God, too, it seems to me, because uh, uh, there's no need for, for the universe to have had a cause. You don't, you don't know that it needs to have a cause. Well, let me, I want to make a different point. Thank you. All right, but I can't let you get away with that. I mean, that would deny premise one. Uh, because you're saying then things can pop into being uncaused out of nothing. And I, I mean, even if I were not a theist, I just couldn't bring myself to believe that, that things like, especially the universe, could just print, spring into being uncaused out of nothing. But How did God spring into being? Well, he didn't. I mean, on this view, see, God is timeless and therefore eternal and beginningless. So, well, he never so, is, into and being. so can the universe be. Just well, that just depends on whether or not premise four is true. Yeah. But let me, let me point out that uh, uh, imaginary time yeah. uh, is, is, as you say, a, a mathematical trick. But it's a mathematical trick that uh, is quite common in physics. Let's consider the example of tunneling, which is a very well-established phenomenon in quantum mechanics, where particles tunnel through a barrier. When, when those particles are inside the barrier, they have things like imaginary momentum. They're unphysical. We call we call that unphysical. But the equations yeah. uh, allow for that possibility, and then you apply the equations, and out comes calculations that agree with the data. And this is one model of, of the uh, of the universe that uh, I don't think you really ruled out the Valenkin uh, tunneling model. If you take that part of Hawking wave function of, of the universe, for example, you can start it off at minus infinity. And it, you, you get a contracting universe, and then you reach this this region, which you call the singularity, but really is not a singularity. Hawking prides himself as, as, as proving that there, uh, that there was a singularity, and then again proving that there wasn't at the beginning of the universe. Right. But you go through this period where you have imaginary time. You have, it's a barrier, just like just like a particle tunneling, tunneling through a barrier. So you have the universe start off in minus infinity, come tunnel through this barrier, and then go into the expansion phase that uh, we're familiar with today. It seems to me that that's still a viable model, at least it's yeah. published by reputable people in reputable journals and hasn't, uh, hasn't been disproven in any. No, I, and I, I wasn't saying that either. What I, what I was saying was non-realistic would be the attempt to interpret this imaginary time regime as a literal, timelessly existing Euclidean four space, uh, four dimensional space. But uh, on the contrary, as I said, it seemed to me that Hawking and Vilenkin have done a great service in showing how a universe with a beginning could be modeled quantum mechanically without having an initial singularity. The only error I think that Hawking makes is a philosophical one where he thinks apparently that having a beginning entails having a beginning point. And I think that's simply a, a non sequitur. So uh, the only my only complaint about imaginary time was with respect to the attempt to interpret it as a sort of timelessly existing four-dimensional space.